Okay. I have a couple of slides to kind of introduce the, um, the, the project very quickly. And um, so this is a very recent survey from July, actually, July 2024 this year, um, which was conducted by the Digital Education Council. 86% uh, of students already are using artificial intelligence in their studies or coursework, and with 54% reporting that they use it daily or weekly. Uh, this is a study that collected responses from more than 3,800 students from 16 countries. So uh, students are already using AI pretty widely. And uh, ChatGPT as a tool was the most widely used according to the survey with uh, about uh, two thirds of the students using it, 66% using it. And in and coincidentally, over uh, two in three students report that they use AI for information searching, which is not exactly the greatest use um, um, if you know how to use these tools. Uh, we, don't know, we, know, we know, of course, that this can lead students to the wrong path because um, uh, la la large language models have this uh, failure mode popularly referred to as hallucinations, where they just get answers that are inaccurate or completely false. And so, uh, uh, with this high adoption across the student population, uh, it means that higher education needs to see AI as a core infrastructure. It's um, uh, the CEO of this very uh, institution that did the survey said that uh, it is infrastructure rather than a tool and that universities need to boost AI literacy, both in students and faculty. The survey also shows that 80% of students actually say that universities are not fully meeting their expectations regard, um, regarding AI. So this is an important thing to keep in mind. So this is why I uh, want to share with you the uh, AI mentor, which uh, is at course level using materials, uh, the course material for retrieval of mental generation. I'll mention that in a, a bit more uh, detail. And it has a persona that is set by the instructor via the system prompt. So you can uh, uh, set some guardrails on how you want the AI mentor to work. Um, the idea is that you can add course resources to the tool so that um, this num a number of documents can be added in various formats, like PDF or via URL. If you have something available on GitHub repository, you can add the URL. You can add a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive. And these documents are automatically indexed by this platform using uh, what's called an embedding model. So all of the uh, documents are now um, you know, in some sort of vector embedding space so that they can be immediately searched when searched when the student uh, makes a question to find the relevant similar content to then inject into the prompt so that the language model has both the student question and the relevant material from the course to answer in a grounded way the question. So the answers are always grounded on the course materials and this is a one way that we can uh, avoid hallucinations. And one of the important features of this as well is that you have full control through the settings um, um, with the choice of model and vendor uh, that so through entering, for example, the API key um, necessary to interact with these models, you can choose to use OpenAI models, which I'm using right now, GPT-4.0 or GPT-4. You can use Google models, uh, Gemini, or open models for Meta, Llama, uh, and driving models, all of the models are available through an API key. You can just choose the one that you want to use. And then, of course, pay as you go using the uh, API. And I think this is important for the tool to be, to be vendor neutral, because when it comes to models, everything's changing very fast. And uh, um, uh, almost none of the tools available give you this ability to actually experiment and with different models and also keep track of your usage and understand what is the real usage uh, of a tool like this rather than by the contract uh, with a company. Now the instructor can set, I'm going to show you a live demo in a moment, so this is just my prepared slides in case it didn't work. The instructor can set custom, uh, custom welcome message um, uh, with a system prompt, which means the hidden instructions that tell the AI how to respond to the student on how to act, you can set, for example, uh, um, some guardrails, always ask, answer an example, or guide the student um, um, to the context of the text if the student asks a question that is out, out of context. 
uh, of our course, then um, you, you can potentially write a long instruction that will be part of the behavior of this AI mentor and um, customize it to your heart's content. And well, that means that you probably never again have to ask your emails about things that are in the syllabus, because you can add the syllabus uh, to the knowledge base of this AI mentor, and the students quickly realize that it's much quicker to ask in the uh, AI chat, when is the next uh, homework due, than to ask you uh, by email, because it answers in, in automatically. And uh, incidentally, uh, they also start learning about the limitations of these types of tools, because, uh, I, um, and how to interact with these tools, because you have to, uh, if you want to ask when is the next homework due, you have to tell it the date, because it doesn't know what date it is. And uh, so uh, there's some degree of literacy uh, that is developed in the students' interactions with this tool. And of course, the answers are grounded. Uh, the answers about coursework are grounded in those index course, course material. This example that I'm showing right here um, uh, is, uh, is very classical. So I am I'm giving you a link there. On the, I'll share with the, the PDF of the slides later, and it's an active link to a specific uh, lecture, uh, it's a lecture in my course, that uses a data set of craft canned beers uh, to analyze, to show visualizations, to uh, show how to do different kinds of uh, data manipulation. And in this question, uh, a sample question, it says we have a data set of canned beers with several quantitative and qualitative features to make a bubble chart of the data set of beers, collecting them by style. What is the key canvas feature that we need? Canvas is a, um, a library of the Python ecosystem for data analysis. And the answer is um, the key canvas feature that you need to make bubble chart is the group body function. And here is an example of a snippet of text. And not only is that example correct, of course, there's a lot of information online about the Python uh, ecosystem that uh, the uh, underlying LLM is drawing from, but additionally, it's drawing from my course materials. And so that example is true to the material, producing the exact um, correct column labels, ABB and IBU, which are in the lesson. And so the example is now not just a random example, but it's using uh, the, the, the variable names and the, uh, um, uh, it's, 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 it's close to the, the course materials. And so it's uh, for the student much more useful. And uh, here's another example, uh, similar. What is the syntax I need to compute the mean of a feature in the style groups? Again, this is a question that without context seems, what, you know, if you ask this to a random uh, general purpose LLM, style groups could mean, mean function styles, could mean anything, right? But in this case, because the context is, or the context of the course is available to the tool, it, it will respond the question grounded in the source materials and the only data set we're using in the course lessons is the data set of years with the style of years and it's actually giving you the correct um, um, uh, syntax where style is uh, a label of a column of this data set. So this is much more useful to the student as an example. So now let me give you a live demo. I'll stop sharing from my slides and start sharing from my um, browser. And here is the um, live uh, uh, interface. Uh, and here on the left, we have, of course, the history of chats that uh, you might be used to seeing. Um, these are chats that I have had um, uh, been playing around with myself. Uh, let me uh, hide that again for now. Let me show you, as an instructor, um, I have the ability to, for example, change the model that is being used um, uh, in, in the AI Mentor. Uh, at this moment, I have provided a valid API key for uh, the OpenAI models. Uh, if I had an API key for the Anthropic models, I could add it there. At the moment, I don't have one. But I could select at any point in time to change the model so that the um, for whatever reason, in a course context, it might be that one model behaves better than the other, and they all have different strengths and weaknesses. Um, also, let me show you that uh, here, this is, this is a, a set of samples. I'm working with a, a company that developed this platform, of course, and there are a set of demos here. The only actual live one being used is my demo right here. So here is how us, I, as an instructor, would interact with this. I can go to settings, and in settings, I can set, for example, via 
this data sets uh, tab, I can add the resources. I have already added the URL or all the resources that I have available on a GitHub repository for my course. I also have up, uh, added my syllabus for this semester. At any point in the semester, I can continue to add documents to this data set. And uh, via this simple interface, I could add um, URL, PDF, docx, and even a GitHub repository. And there are some um, features in development to add other types of um, um, resources. Uh, the YouTube resource um, is able to extract the transcript of the public YouTube video if that transcript uh, is provided by the platform. And uh, as you can see, I have a bunch of resources that I've already added to my AI mentor. So of course, you need to have research documents available um, to add. If PPT uh, is now one of the options right now, that you can export to PDF. Ideally, you have lecture notes, you have materials on GitHub, you have many uh, other sources that may be using. The prompts um, tab is where I set the behavior of the AI mentor. For example, here I've said, I've said you are a helpful instructor ready to answer uh, the student's question about engineering computation, a course in technical computing with Python, the course instructor is Professor Lorena Barba, the George Washington University. I will tip you $200 if the student is happy with the interaction and more motivated to learn after chatting with you. And all of these things are different tips for getting prompts to work better. And uh, some of the things that I have done here as well, um, for example, you'll see here that I say, um, uh, well, to extract uh, from, the, from the documentation uh, of the scientific academic system, if the answer is not in the uh, provided resources. And um, let's see else, uh, what else uh, I wanted to show you. If they ask something unrelated to the course, try to bring them back to task and tell the student you are here to help with Professor Barbara's course in engineering computation with Python. You can ask them, where are you in the course? What did you find confusing today or something? So I gave us some examples of things to do. Um, um, Meta cognitive prompts encourage students to think about their thinking. Delayed feedback gives students time to think and limit direct answers. All of these are guide, um, sort of pedagogically based prompts to elicit a behavior from the model that is going to be more conducive to getting the student to think and use the tool to help them learn rather than to skip on learning. Uh, that is the idea. Okay, so that is the system prompt. There's also a moderation prompt. So the student asks anything that is uh, inappropriate, then they get told off. Basically, they said, we know this uh, uh, um, question is inappropriate and uh, the uh, um, LLM will refuse to answer. And there are suggested prompts and um, things like that. You can embed the, um, uh, the the chat on another website or another uh, or the uh, learning management system via iframe as uh, many of these tools work and of course you can set the large language model APIs here for JPD I have I, I, this is how you provide the API key to this interface so that I can um, um, uh, enable different models so this is a, a very important feature this is um, um, not providing any vendor login. So, did anyone want to try an example before I um, stop this demo? Um, what if I say I'm bored at this meeting? <laughs> <laughs> Well, uh, let's see what it says. Oh, here yeah, your meetings can sometimes be long, huh? Let's uh, make a use of this time. Uh, is there a concept or problem from Professor Barber's engineering computations course that we'd like to discuss? So here the LLM is responding to my instructions to bring the conversation back to task. Uh, and this is something that can be done um, dynamically. So, for example, I discovered that I needed this instruction after the first day of classes where the students would actually be trying the tool to ask random things about, uh, you know, because they're, they're 19. So they would go in and say uh, random things at first uh, to try it out. And so I said, oh, maybe I need to modify my system prompt and make sure that the students get guided back on task. And so I did. And in the process, I'm learning, the students are learning, I am a uh, refining the tool as we go along and as well I can add more resources as I as the course develops uh, and so on um, um, what is the best uh, way to read 
read a data file uh, from a URL in Canvas, say. And because of the um, way that I've given the system prompt, it is not only giving you the answer, but and with, a, with, a, with an example, but an explanation and, and, and so on. So this is part of the pedagogical behavior that is embedded in the system prompt. I can show you more later, but in the interest of time, I'm gonna stop that part of the presentation for now, but let me give you a couple more slides only that I think uh, will drive some uh, important points home. One is that, um, why not just use ChatGPT, right? Why do we need such a tool? Because really AI needs to be injected with learning science. Uh, it is not sufficient to just use a, gener a generalist tool for educational purposes. And a lot of people are already using AI, already we saw that in great numbers, mostly ChatGPT, and we don't have, we might think that we don't have to do anything about it, but, um, uh, for educational context, we really do need to be a little bit more careful. This is uh, here a, a screenshot of a recent randomized control trial that looked at high school students working in mathematics courses, and one group had access to ChatGPT, to a general ChatGPT interface, and the other group had a chat interface that was built with good prompt engineering to um, elicit a more pedagogical uh, responses. Uh, both, and then was a third group that was not using any AI at all, uh, both groups that used AI perform better on their practice problems, but the group that used ChatGPT perform statistically significantly worse in exams. And the reason is that students uh, are using uh, these tools sort of out of the box naively and um, are tempted to copy what the chatbot answers without much thinking. And, you know, like pilots over relying on autopilot, uh, which uh, the FAA has uh, said it uh, needs to be. Uh, Tone down and uh, right um, uh, over reliance on AI can lead to reduced human skills. So, this is, of course, more of a concern uh, given that AI can be unpredictably unreliable. So, this is an important uh, research result uh, that supports these types of uh, uh, trials. And uh, from this paper, I'm going to highlight this uh, quote that AI has the potential to improve human performance, but must be deployed with appropriate guardrails when learning is important. And just a couple more slides. What are other universities doing? Well, the typical thing that they are doing is to hire uh, OpenAI uh, Enterprise or OpenAI uh, ChatGPT Edge at EDU. And um, even universities like Yale that are committing large amounts of funding for a multidimensional effort in AI, when it comes to learning, they typically provide a world of uh, environment um, to the generalist tools, uh, particularly OpenAI tools. And, um, you know, they, 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 there's an advantage there because there's, it goes through the university um, uh, authentication. Um, and there are some privacy protections, meaning that they use the prompts and are not saved or used in training uh, their models. Uh, that's great, but we saw it is just not enough. Um, uh, so, and, and to be clear, a lot of people are using, are underground users of AI. And so they're, if, you're, if they're using the generalist tools, there's probably a different data leak because information that could be private is being sent to these providers without any control. So it is important to provide a world garden um, uh, to access these tools. Uh, many universities are really jumping into this idea of subscriptions with these big providers of AI tools. This is a screenshot for, from uh, uh, ASU, who has been particularly vocal about their AI initiatives, and they uh, one are the early adopters of the ChatGPT enterprise. Um, and one extension is uh, University of San Diego that uh, launched, launched recently, recently a uh, university website uh, uh, that is uh, uh, provides an in-house uh, LLM that has been trained with materials uh, from the university. But remember, UCLP has a typical computing center, right? We are a super computing uh, a center of excellence in the nation, and they have the ability to provide a huge cluster and have an in house uh, expertise uh, to develop this kind of project. And uh, so um, uh, the important thing from this experience, though, is that their approach was to avoid a vendor contract. 
Um, but of course, at the cost of having to manage their own software and hardware, which uh, uh, is a great effort and expense, and, and a project like that would not be feasible for institutions with more limited resources. Um, but from that um, example, we have this advice. The advice I have for other institutions is do not lock yourself in just yet with a vendor that is, and watch costs carefully. And this is possible when you have a, uh, so me, I can show you later that through the um, uh, interface with uh, OpenAI, you can see exactly how much is being uh, spent on this. But uh, this is the last slide, which uh, uh, I wanted to share the, this, this vision that I, uh, um, uh, that comes out of this experiment. Uh, I showed you my new custom AI mentor demo, which had active support materials and through a retrieval of mental generation, a persona that is set by the instructor via the system prompt, moderation of student prompts, and access to various models through API with no vendor locking. So the broader vision is that we could have a catalog of course level AI mentors like this, which are configured by faculty to behave in a certain way in a specific context and be grounded by the particular course materials. And by the way, we could have one with, of course, the seed, um, um, you know, bylaws and all of these documents, so the new faculty could be asking their questions about what each committee does to uh, seize a uh, faculty AI mentor, uh, and we wouldn't have to start searching for the PDF and then take that document. So that is the vision, and that was my last slide. And just the last thing I'm going to show you is the... Um, um, uh, pay as you go. So it's just a different tab here. Here it is. This is what I see in the platform. Uh, this is the day of classes right here. It cost three dollars that day with forty-five students using the AI for an hour and fifteen minutes. So you know, at, you can see exactly what how much it costs to provide such a tool for a group of students. It'll be in less than ten dollars per week per course, and instead to so, so you know, ChatGPT uh, EDU contracts run in the hundreds of thousands of, of dollars per year. So we really are better off looking at a, uh, this type of, of uh, solution. And that's all. Thank you so much for allowing me to share this with you. Thank you, Lorena. Any, any quick questions for Lorena? She obviously is, you know, going to be, uh, um, uh, you know, willing to. If anybody really wants to dive into this. She can sit down with you uh, on an individual basis, but any sort of... And if we have questions? a few people who are interested, maybe we can convince the dean that we can have a school-level pilot, and that would be very, very yeah, nice yeah, to do. Absolutely.